urban legends of Southern California. Went two nights, was waiting to do this review uh, because there was a lot that's changed between my first night and my second night that I went. So, here we go. What's going on you guys? This is Anthony from the Knights of Horror. I just came back from my second time around with Urban Legends of Southern California. Now, let me make one, one thing clear. Um, I've been seeing a lot of heat online about this event, and I went opening night, and I went again tonight at this recording, it's the 10th. Um, and I understand where the hate is coming from, but the way I've been looking at this haunt season thus far, and I've told many people this, is that I am just very happy to be getting something rather than nothing. Now I understand there was a lot of there was a lot of tweaks that needed to be done and a lot of things that needed to happen going forward with this haunt and I think with my night two it did that exactly and we'll dive deep into that a little bit later but nonetheless I think the hate uh, a lot of people are used to events like Not Scary Farm Halloween Horror Nights Queen Mary's Dark Harbor uh, Los Angeles Haunted Hayride of course when they did the walk on one but. You guys got to remember one thing. It is the middle of a pandemic. It's a lot harder to accomplish socially distant scares than it is if it were not a pandemic or a regular haunt season. I mean, you're in your car the entire time and they're doing the best they can to scare you. Um, but I will compare night one to my second night going uh, because I want you guys to know what has changed and if it's worth still going. Now, I've heard a lot of, um, like I said, I've seen a lot of hate, heard a lot of hate, of course. The biggest thing, obviously, was the pricing. Uh, I think that is my only complaint about this haunt. That's all I have to complain, really, about it, is the pricing is a little too pricey for this experience. Uh, if they were to lower it down just a tad bit so they made it affordable, I think it would be, uh, there would be a lot less hate on it. And I think that's what everyone's biggest issue was, was they had a lot, they paid a lot of money for this experience only to be let down. Now, here's what I can say about this. When I heard about the event back in August, I actually emailed them to see if they were going to be doing a media night because we wanted to cover this event. This was something new for 2020, obviously, with the whole drive through experience with the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, this was new to all of us, and there's still more that we're going to be checking out later on in the season, but this was like the first official drive through one to give us a little look of what these are going to be like this season. Uh, sadly, they weren't having a media event. They were nice enough to offer me a coupon code to take $27 off my order, which I thought was very nice of them. Uh, so, the first night we went, I went with TLEV Media, or TLEV Horror, whichever one you want to uh, associate them by. And we all split, I think, there was, we filled the car with the five people we were allowed to take, and we, we split it down the, the road, I think, of like $27 each. Um, and yeah, the coupon code took off, I think $27 as it is. So I only paid literally $80 and 99 cents for my ticket. Um, so the coupon code took off the $27. We all split it down the middle, uh, 27, uh, between the three of us. And we, we had a good time that night. Now here is what happened night one compared to this night. Uh, first and foremost, I'll talk a little bit about traffic control. Um, being, and this is not, this is no excuse for this, but it happens with the best, especially when you're doing a first time event. Being that it was the first time event, I didn't, I don't know that they thought this was going to get the attention that it got. I didn't, they probably didn't know that it was going to be as big as it, it as it has become. Um, when we got there, we had a 10 o'clock reservation and they said about a thousand cars had came that night. For opening night so they I don't think they were expecting a lot of people to come to this um, so I would say for the first night that I went traffic control was somewhat organized um, but I think it still needed to be worked on a little bit more which they really improved on in the, the second night that I went which we'll talk about later um, however they do have a, a deal where of course you uh, can pre-order food and merchandise on their website when you check out to buy the ticket they gave you the option to go and do that 
to pick all that up in your car so you can enjoy your food, you can enjoy your merch in your car. And they had an area, one area where before you go to the experience, you get to use the restroom. Um, the only issue I had with that, which was more organized the second time around, was you had to have at least one person in the car with uh, keeping the line going uh, as the line was moving along, while your other four or however many members you had in your car used the restroom, and then whoever came back um, had to keep the car going. Now, the issue that arises with that is if you take people that don't have licenses and you're the only one that has a driver's license, there is no possible way of doing that. You, you as a driver, had to sacrifice using the restroom and wait till after, just to use said restroom. But they organized that way more the second time around. The second issue that I had going into night one was I think the wait time was way too long. Uh, we had a reservation for 10 o'clock. We we showed up at 9:30, and we didn't actually get into the experience until about 10:45. Now, it's about an hour and 15 minutes we waited, but what made it fun for us was that, like I said, the people that I went with, we had a great time, and we were playing music the entire time, hyping each other up. So I didn't mind waiting that hour and 15 minutes. I can, other, I can see now other people getting frustrated with that, but if you have a good group of people you're going with and you have a fun time, and you're just playing music and just having a good time, hyping each other up, that hour and 15 minutes actually goes by really fast like it did for us. Um, and we also saw a lot of people there, uh, other YouTubers, um, Omni Adventures was there, Theme Park Takeover was there, we got to see them. Um, so that was really cool to see them uh, the same night. But I, I really enjoyed myself uh, waiting that little time. I mean, what's cool between the VIP and the general mission, now, John kind of talked about it on the hotline a little bit about what the differences are between VIP and general mission and he was right there isn't really such a big difference I think the only major difference is when you're in the VIP zone you get to stick in the middle of the actual show area where you get the best view I feel like uh, much like how John said if there's bigger cars that are in the VIP area and you got a general mission ticket it's gonna ruin your experience a little bit but um, the only differences between the VIP and the standard was, of course, you got a cool glow stick, which this time around they actually slapped on the Urban Legends Haunt uh, sticker. The first time around they didn't do that, so this was really cool to go back and, and really get another one, um, which I will be putting on my set. Um, but that was it, and then you got a free photo, which they'll text to you and they get your information and everything. But that was really it. You got to be in the middle, and that was pretty much it. Um, John also mentioned in the hotline about the movie not really adding up with the entire event, which is mostly true. Uh, they do talk a lot about the urban legends that they're, you're supposed to be seeing in there. However, later on down the line when you see the Bloody Mary scene, that was actually never mentioned in the movie. So that was kind of a curveball thrown at us. Um, however, the rest of the urban legends are mentioned in the, the, the opening film that you watch at the drive-in. Um, the first time around, the scare actors, I think because it was opening night, so with scare actors, they're just trying to get their, their roles right, and I think that it's just that opening night jitters, and they're just maybe nervous, I don't know, but the energy was there the opening night, and um, I think they did a really good job interacting with everybody, uh, but like I said, like John said, the film, especially with the Bloody Mary scene, there was no Bloody Mary scene in the film, so that was the only uh, letdown with that. The first scene now, which is it's a, the mine scene where you go into like this mine and you're supposed to be seeing all these miners and stuff. Uh, the characters did a really good job bringing the uh, the vibe to life with that. Obviously, you're surrounded by um, storage crates and they're trying their best to give you that experience. Uh, things hanging down from that, and you know you got crash cars in the middle, depending on where you sat or where you saw it from. Uh, and the miners did a good job. Now opening night, I didn't see this the second night, but opening night there were a couple sliders, and that kind of got me excited because you know not scary farm does sliders, uh, Queen Mary has sliders, so I, I, I'm really accustomed to seeing sliders. I, I really I get, I get really excited when I see sliders because I think they're what they do is really talented and badass. So that was really cool to see the sliders. Um, the ambiance was there, but I really think they could have done a better job bringing that mine to life. But for the most part, uh, the miners 
I mean, they had chains to bang on the storage units with. They could use the cars around them. The flashlight scare was actually really good, uh, especially when they'd get in your face and just turn it on out of nowhere. I think what the most effective scare that I've seen thus far with these drive through haunts is um, you don't know if they're coming from behind you unless you're really paying attention. So the scares that come from behind you and you have your window down kind of will catch you off guard, which is a really good scare for a socially distant event. Um, and I really like when they scream in your face and, and all that stuff. So, especially when they bang the chains from behind you on the the storage cargoes, I think that works well. It's a very good scare. It's very creative. Um, it's an easy, simple scare, and it actually gets a lot of people. But the only way you can really experience that is if you're on either edge of the crates. There is a like a middle part where you could miss out on that opportunity. But if you're easily scared, that will probably get you. Um, but other than that, the mine scene was pretty good. Um, so let's go on to the Bigfoot scene. Now, I know a lot of big, a lot of people's biggest issues was the first night, if you went the first night, was the costume. A lot of people said you can see his shirt under, you can see the neckline between the mask and the actual costume. Uh, I remember Josue pointed out that I think uh, one of them was wearing, one of the Bigfoots was wearing Adidas, which I thought was funny. But I think that was the only major issue with this scene, uh, was just the costume kind of looked cheesy. Uh, however, the scare actors who were playing the campers did a really good job uh, bringing you, bringing the whole scene to life of you being in the middle of this forest uh, setting. And of course, uh, you know, they're looking around. I don't know if they're looking for Bigfoot or not, but they're just, they're camping and then they're all, they're all in their own tents. Uh, a lot of stuff has changed from the first night to the second night that I went, so we'll be talking about that too. But I think the biggest issue with that was um, just the just the Bigfoot costume, and, and you got to see him a lot, which Bigfoot, if you guys know the legend of Bigfoot, he's a character that doesn't like to be seen too much, and I think the second time around they got that spot on, so... That, I think, was the biggest problem with the, from what a lot of people have been saying, and even I saw that, but they really fixed that the second time around. Um, something new that came the second time around that wasn't the first time was, of course, the whole carnival scene, which is mentioned in the actual film. And this time, the first time I went through was you just drove right past it and went straight to the Bloody Mary scene. There was just broken carnival rides, and that was it. Um, which obviously there was room for it to have the scares and have scare actors there to bring that story to life. Uh, and the second time around, we'll talk about it, they actually improved on that. Uh, the Bloody Mary scene. Now this is the one I kept saying that wasn't mentioned in the actual film, at least from what I remember seeing. Uh, but I would say this was probably the scene that stole the show the most. The first time around, at least. Um, you have the dancers going out doing a whole dance performance, which is very, very good. Very good performance. They, they nailed it. Um, those dancers, that's not an easy job to do. So for them to go out and do that every night, that is dedication and commitment. And I applaud all of the dancers that do that at Urban Legends. Um, even the Bloody Mary scene when she finally came out was just a really cool like transition. Uh, which was really dope, but I noticed a lot of things happening around the second time than the first time around because the way it ended is they summon her, they do a dance, and then at the end, the actors, at least with us, I don't know if it was just because of the end of the night, but at least with us, uh, they kind of were just walking around and kind of looking at us, and they gave us some really cool content and stuff, and uh, I would say this Bloody Mary scene really stole the show. Um, makes you wonder if Bloody Mary is quite the party person <laughs> but uh, she got lit right there and it was really cool overall verdict though for the first night I think um, regardless you know I, I try not to look at anything negative especially with this year um, so the overall verdict for me was I had a great time that first night especially because I was with uh, TLEV and we were just cracking jokes having a good time hyping each other up it was just honestly a fun time uh, and I had really no issue I mean everything that I listed that is just stuff that I started noticing after, but regardless of all that, I mean, you, that's really what, what takes the fun out of it, I know, but if you're just going to have a good time, like, you're gonna have a fun time. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about Night 2, because Night 2 had 
a lot of changes, like a lot of changes. So uh, I had seen on their social media and on everything that Night 2 actually had um, more updates and they really updated it after that first week. Uh, traffic control for starters was smooth as hell this time around. Uh, they really have it organized and they really have it so uh, it, it's just easy to get to the location faster and everything. Hella organized. They actually made a station now where you can actually pull over your car and get out of the line to use the restroom and actually the, another station separate so you can actually pick up your drinks and your merch and your food uh, and then just get back into the line again. So it was hella smooth. Uh, I think they really nailed down the traffic control thing so you can actually instead of waiting in your car and having to wait your place in line to use the restroom and all that like you can actually pull over everyone can get out of the car and use the restroom and then you know get back in the car and get back in line or get your food and your merch and all that so traffic control was hella smooth this time around I was very impressed by that um, let's see uh, overall though dude I have to say from night one to night two and I'm not saying night one that scare characters weren't energetic because they really were but the energy for night two like tonight was just insane these guys like took it up a whole nother level compared to night one and like even the opening scene like they were more creepy in the drive-in and they were really just just talking to you and, and telling you like that like I think I think I got footage of me of the director telling me that I look good and he was gonna eat me for dinner like that was just overall creepy you know you had all the people they, they were just creepy and the miners there was one miner in, in particular that was just on point and just loud and and really out there which was awesome um so i think overall the the scare actors were just energetic and they were there uh the mine scene like i said was more energetic and i think this there was even more scares than last time i didn't see sliders so i don't know if they took those out or if they weren't just doing them that night but i didn't see any sliders nor did i hear any but there's a lot more scares this time around i can tell you that so that was cool. Uh, ambiance was still the same though. Obviously, they, they, I don't think you can really do much with the whole mining scene, but nonetheless, it was still, energy was hella there and it was, it was really good. The Bigfoot scene, now everyone, like I said, had problems with the costumes. This time around, they actually dressed up Bigfoot in these ghillie suits. Now, the ghillie suits is a famous scare that you see a lot over at Horror Nights um, and sometimes at Knott's in a couple of their mazes. The ghillie suits actually worked really well in this scene. I mean, you had the characters dashing through the car so like Bigfoot was kind of like running past you so you could barely see him and barely you know catch him and stuff and the Bigfoots were energetic way more energetic this time and I remember even towards the end as we were leaving that like Bigfoot we had I had caught on camera the Bigfoot looking at me and then he just ran towards our car as we were making our way to the, the clown scene and I did not expect that and they were just energetic they looked a lot better and I really applaud them for doing that change I think they knew that was one of the biggest complaints they were getting and they actually listened to the fans and, and made the change which I thought was awesome um, the new carnival scene was really good this time around you actually stop at the carnival and there's clowns and carnies walking around and most importantly there was clowns with chainsaws which if you're a haunt fan and you love chainsaws like you know that smell when you go to Horror Nights like it's just a, a wonderful smell I don't know what it is it, you just know you're at a haunt when you go through that but I think the overall the chainsaws and, and added carnies with with that whole abandoned carnival scene it really worked out they had a, a one of the clowns with the horn she kept coming up to us and beeping the horn and it was hilarious and there was one with like big pants and he was hilarious and then when they came with the chainsaws that I think that's what really sold it for me um, the Bloody Mary scene was honestly the same exact thing except at the end um, instead of the actors or dancers uh, interacting with you and walking around they actually made it so Bloody Mary actually kills them at the end and they're all dead on the floor and everything which I thought was a very good way to do that um, of course with the legend of Bloody Mary they, there's been tales of that now of like her killing people and stuff so that actually worked out really really well I was very surprised about that overall though the verdict for the second time around it was actually like I loved the first uh, round because you know the people you went with but I think this time around with the new changes and everything it just felt more it felt more updated and it felt more good I mean the first time around was awesome but this time around was even better so urban legends I, I really applaud you guys for listening to the fans and making the changes when you guys did pretty early on so 
the rest of the season can be hopefully a great season for you guys. You guys have my support 100%. I had fun both times that I went. Night two that I went was a little bit better than night one, but I still had a great time in night one. But nonetheless, guys, I highly suggest you check out Urban Legends. Go support them. Um, I know they've been getting a lot of hate on the internet, but it's we're in the middle of the pandemic, and they're doing what they can with what they have available to them. And you got to remember, this was an event that I believe that was changed drastically within a matter of time. So they worked with what they had, and I applaud them for that, just for giving us the Halloween vibe and keeping the Halloween spirit alive. So Urban Legends, from me to you, thank you so much for keeping the spirit of Halloween alive and giving us something of a haunt that we can enjoy. That is going to do it for this Urban Legends Southern California review. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, hit that like button and that subscribe button. With that bell notification, be aware every time we put up a new video. Follow us on Twitter at Knights of Horror and on Instagram at The Knights of Horror. Uh, my, my name's Anthony. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.